Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and today we are going to solve a, an Amy problem. I think this is Amy number 2009, Amy 2, problem number 14. So, uh, let's first look at the problem. The sequence AN satisfies A0 equals 0 and AN plus 1 equals 8 fifths AN plus 6 fifths square root of 4 to the power of n minus an squared for n is greater than or equal to 0. And we have to find the greatest integer less than or equal to a10. So when we look at the definition of this sequence, it's really ugly. And the especially ugly part that we see is the square root part. And uh, we'd like to change this into something nicer. And uh, within the square root part, the most ugly thing is obviously the 4 to the power of n. Because if we can change it into a 1 minus a n squared, then at least this we can like manip manipulate stuff or do like substitutions or something like that to change it into something nicer. But this 4 to power n messes everything up. So let's see if we can get rid of it. So the key observation here is if we can factor out a 4 to power of n, then that'd be nice. So why don't we try to do that? If we factor it out, then we get this part is 2 to the power of n times the square root of 1 minus a n squared, and that is over 4 to the power of n, right? So this we can simplify a little bit more as 2 to the power of n times the square root of 1 minus a n over 2 to the power of n, and all that squared. So this makes us think about substituting another sequence for a n. In particular, if we can substitute b n equals a n over 2 to the power of n. Sorry, I'm using a mouse, so it's a little harder this time. But if we can substitute b n equals a n over 2 to the power of n, then we can have a very much nicer square root of 1 minus b n squared. So why not do this? Let's move this over here. Okay, so this is our key substitution. Now we see that this substitution implies that a n is equal to 2 to the n times b n. So now we can substitute this into our original expression to find a simpler expression. So we get that 2 to the power of n plus 1 times b n n plus 1 equals 8 fifths times 2 to the power of n times a n plus 6 fifths times the square root of 4 to the power of n minus 2, oh uh, this is b, b, 2 to the power of uh, 4 to the n minus, what's that 2 doing there? 4 to the power of n minus, oh wait, yeah, it's supposed to be there, huh? 2 to the power of n times b n squared. Oops, this is 2 to the power of n times b n squared. Okay, now we can simplify this part. Remember how we factor out a 4 to the power of n from the inside of the square root? Now this turns into 6 fifths times 2 to the power of n square root of 1 minus b n squared. Okay, now we see that we have a factor of 2 to the power of n conveniently, actually 2 to the power of n plus 1. So we can divide this from both sides to get the equation b n plus 1 equals 4 fifths times b n plus 3 fifths times the square root of 1 minus b n squared. Okay, we're halfway there now. All we need to do is find uh, b10, and then we can find a10, and then we are done. So this expression reminds us of, t in two ways, of trigonometry. The first way that it reminds us of trigonometry is this thing, square root of 1 minus b n squared. Because if we substitute b n to, as say, like, sine of theta n, then the square root of 1 minus bn squared is simply 
let's draw it down here, cosine of theta n by the identity sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Well, it'd be absolute value of cosine theta n because the square root is always positive. Anyways, now the second thing that shows us that this might have to do with trigonometry is this four fifths and the three fifths. Because in a three, four, five triangle, if we called one of the angles phi, then we have that sine of phi is just three fifths and cosine of phi is just uh, four fifths. So this is sine phi, this is cosine phi. Whoops, cosine phi, phi. All right. So that means that this entire expression just evaluates to sine of theta n and cosine of phi plus sine of phi times the absolute value of cosine of theta n. And we know that phi to n plus 1 is just sine of theta n plus 1. Okay, so now we have yet another recursion, and this time in terms of theta, or theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, and we want to find theta 10, I guess. And uh, now this expression is pretty special because it looks extremely similar to the sine angle sum identity. So basically what we're doing here now is we start out with, in if this is the complex plane, then we start out with, uh, let's see, bn equals an over 2 to the power of n, so a 0 is 0, 2 to the power of 0 is 1, so b0 equals 0 over 1, which is equal to 0. So we have that sine of theta 0 equals 0, and so theta n is just 0. So we have our first point here. This is the point at which theta 0 is at. So now, what's the next point? Well, this thing, since right now cosine of theta n is positive, is just equal to the angle sum identity, which is theta sine of theta n plus v. So theta 1 would be somewhere around here, right? And now where's theta 2? Somewhere around here. And uh, cosine theta n is still positive, so theta 3, somewhere around here. Now this is where things get interesting, because now cosine of theta n is negative. So if cosine of theta n is negative and it changes into positive, then wouldn't this be kind of equivalent to sine of theta n cosine phi minus sine of phi cosine theta n, right? Because if we're changing this part from the negative that it originally is to a positive, then it's the same as keeping this as negative and instead changing this part to be from positive to negative. So in this case, the this actually is equivalent to the angle difference identity, which is sine theta n minus phi. So actually, after theta 3, theta 4 would actually be right here. And so theta 5 would be right here. Theta 6 would be right here, and so on. So this tells us that it's repeating over theta 2 and theta 3 after theta 3. So now we notice that all the even thetas are on this point, and all the odd thetas are on this point. And we want to find theta 10, so theta 10 is right here. So all I need to do now is find theta 2, which is equal to theta 10. And uh, what does theta 2 equal? Well, we'll just have to compute this. And I've done you a favor and already computed it and found that theta 2, well, sine of theta 2 is equal to, I believe, 24 over 25. Right. So that means 
sine of theta 10 is also equal to that. So what does sine of theta 2 equal? Well, that's just b10. And what does, if b10 equals 24 over 25, what does a10 equal? Well, a10 over 2 to the power of 10 is 1024 equals 24 over 25. Then that means a10 equals 24 times 1024 over 25. And this, when rounded down to the nearest integer, is just 983. And we are done. 983. Hey guys, Zong here, back with another math video. Today we're going to be doing Amy problem 15 from 2012, Amy 2.